My name is uh, Johanna Smith and I'm a physical volcanologist and I'm specifically interested in the tiny small particles called tephra, which is everything that flies out of the volcano. A huge plume of drifting ash from a volcanic eruption in Iceland is disrupting air transport. Northern Europe has been disrupted by volcanic ash eruption, causing such huge travel disruption. The impact that it is having with all of those concourses. It all depends on what happens in Iceland, hundreds of kilometres away. It's very, very intense and it's very um, overwhelming. The smells of the sulfur dioxide, the taste of the sulfur dioxide, all the heat coming off from the lava flows, the rumbling of all the rocks. It sounds kind of clinkery like if you smash China. Of course, you want to get up and take samples. It's very exciting as well. My interest in volcanoes started when I was around nine to ten years old and I was in my living room watching uh, this movie made by two famous volcanologists and they were out looking at lava flows and watching volcanoes explode and I thought this is what I want to do and it's just stayed with me in the back of my head ever since then and now that's what I do. I was very lucky last summer that um, I was in Iceland during uh, the newest eruption, which was in Badabunga. In the morning, we were asleep in a big room, 20 of us, and then this uh, group leader comes in and he just shouts, eruption, and everybody just jumps up from the sleeping bags and we're dressed within five minutes and five cars are just heading towards the eruption site. And then we approach and then you just see this uh, red curtain of fire just emerging from the ground up and you just see these red hot fire fountains rising maybe 30 meters from the ground from a one kilometer long uh, open rift in the ground. This is a very, a very rare thing that you get to see the beginning of an eruption. It had just started two hours before we came there, which is pretty rare that you get to go to the field this close to eruption start. So everybody was really excited and um, we were hurrying actually because we thought that maybe it would die down very quickly but then it lasted for more than half a year. Well, of course it's, it's really dangerous to be this close to an active volcano, an active eruption. Uh, the lava is uh, 1200 degrees Celsius hot. We had a day in very intense rain that it, you could just dry off when you got close to the lava flow. So, I mean, there are a lot of safety issues and a lot, a lot of safety rules in this area. This is a high, intense, dangerous area. So the car engines, for instance, they run all the time so you can escape instantly. Um, you always wear your gas masks around your neck. We have gas sensors measuring sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, um, and the oxygen level in the area so that we know if we need to get away. My mission was just to monitor the eruption, see if it was um, dying down, if it was uh, getting more intense, if the intensity was changing, because what you want to know, of course, is how long is this going to last and what can we expect? Can we expect something not as quiet as this lava flow, but something explosive? This is what people want to know. I work with a volcano in Iceland called Katla. And Katla has erupted many, many times during the last 10,000 years, which is the record I have access to in Iceland. So what I do is I take a bag with me and I take a shovel and I go to the field and I dig in the ground around Katla. And then I find these very nicely preserved layers of ash from the eruptions. When I look at the ash, I look for the grain shape of the ash grains. So I look at how big or how small the particles are, and that tells me something about how far they can go as well. So what I'm after when I look at these uh, deposits is that I want to see the characteristics, because that will tell me how are these eruptions generated. That will tell me what 
is the mechanism in the volcano generating these huge eruptions. And based on these statistics that we gain from looking at the history of the volcano, we try to make a forecast of the next eruption. The last eruption from Katla, that was in 1918. So that's approximately 100 years ago. And from the record, we can see that during the last 10,000 years, you have an eruption about every 50 years, which means that we're waiting for Katla to do something. We're waiting for the next eruption 